from fiberglasssupply.com. In this video, we're going to show you the glassing process for this 42 inch foil board. I designed this foil board for going behind the boat and for kiteboarding. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. We've had it out a few times behind the boat, have not yet kited on it. Uh, but a couple of things about the board it is done with a two pound EPS core. We are running one of the uh, twin track cassette boxes in it, and then we glassed it with a layer of six ounce carbon. Uh, capped with another layer of 6 ounce S glass. Obviously, we run an epoxy resin because this is a styrofoam cord board. And I also did a custom deck pad for it out of uh, EVA. So, watch the video. Let us know if you have any questions. I will say we did have some issues with the GoPro while shooting the video, so I am missing like when we glassed the deck and when we did the hot coats. Um, really bummed about that. We thought the GoPro was working and it turns out it had a malfunction. One more thing I forgot to say, the board came in at 6.3 pounds with the deck pad on it. So, uh, pretty happy with that and really super stoked to ride this thing. Now that we have the board shaped and ready to go, the next thing we're going to do is insert our twin track cassette. Our twin track cassette is simply two fin boxes that are set in H60 Divinacell foam. It's a higher density foam that helps support and distribute the stresses of having the foil attached to the board. Uh, the other thing that's going to help distribute those stresses too is we're putting this fin box in now and then we're going to glass over the whole board and then the, the foil gets mounted to that and that clamps against the skin. So we're really, you know, I think well distributed stress wise in there. What we've done here is we've mixed up an epoxy putty using uh, epoxy, in this case Resin Research 2000 CE, with 3M bubbles to make a, a slightly thickened paste. We've put some of that paste in the bottom of the fin box and then we've pasted around the fin box itself and now we're going to install it. Unfortunately, in this case, the box actually sat up a little higher than I wanted it to. I probably could have gotten away with putting less glue in there. Um, not really a big deal. So once I've got that down, I'll take a squeegee and we'll go around the edge and clean that up uh, right there. And after the glue cures, I'll just take a sander and I'll carefully bevel the foam around the fin boxes down to match the board. In this case, I didn't take the fin boxes down any further, so I just beveled that, and there is a little bit of a lump in the bottom of the board, but it's not going to be a big deal. This board is not designed to plane on its bottom. It's just there so we can stand on it and get the foil up on, on flying. After that's done, uh, we're going to take it over to glass. We are going to do cut laps on both sides. So what that means is uh, the first side that we'll glass will be the bottom. And we're going to wrap around the rails all the way to the top. So this is the top here that I'm masking off. We're going to extend our reinforcement onto that tape and then trim it. I am going to do a carbon board on this board. Uh, we're using some pattern carbon. We call that the herringbone pattern. And I'll get that first layer uh, laid up on there. And then we're going to over uh, glass it with some 6 ounce S glass. There's a couple of reasons I'm doing that. I, I don't want to go with a single layer of reinforcement. I think it would be too thin. You know, that layer of carbon is 6 to 8 thousandths of an inch thick. The layer of glass is about 6 thousandths of an inch thick. So I want to have a little bit more meat on the bottom than just a single six thousandths of an inch layer. The other reason that I'm gonna use glass for the second layer and I'm gonna do it over the carbon is that's gonna help hold the carbon down. Carbon tends to be a little stiffer and sometimes can spring back on you. So by using that glass, it'll, it'll hold that down. One option would be to vacuum bag this and that would get the weight out. But this board is so small uh, and already pretty light to begin with that I don't Feel the need um, to vacuum bag it uh, for the extra hassle that it would be. So, so using some epoxy here, uh, first thing I'm going to do is wet out the carbon. Uh, carbon is generally pretty hard to wet out uh, because you can't see through it and you're not really sure, you know, 
did I get it all the way saturated out? So there's a couple of things that I'm going to do to make sure I'm fully saturated. One is uh, I'm wetting the carbon first and then I'm going to put the glass over and wet it out, which means it'll get more squeegee time uh, and more resin work down through it. The second thing is as I'm squeegeeing the carbon, I listen for popping and air bubbles and, and such. And once that popping sound goes away, I'm usually pretty sure that uh, I've gotten all the air out. I switched over to a brush here. Uh, this board does have bevels on the rails and that was making it kind of hard to control my bead of resin. So by switching to the brush to do the get you know resin on the carbon and do that part of the wet out, it makes it a little bit easier. I'm also going around underneath and hitting the rails to make sure I have uh, epoxy on the rails underneath. So here's that layer six ounce S cloth. I'm gonna roll that out, uh, cut it in place, and then laminate it. The one area I did go wrong here uh, is I should have mixed up more epoxy and, and used some fresher epoxy. So what happens is you work the epoxy and you recatch it in your bucket is it gets some foamy air in it uh, and that air doesn't really come out right away you probably set it to the side and it would come out but you're in the middle of laminating so you, you really can't do that the reason I mention that is if you have foamy epoxy and you put it on glass uh, it's gonna be kinda hazy where that was so if you if you run clear epoxy over it it's not foamy and it's really hard to see in here but it was um, you, you get a better cosmetic. So it's a purely cosmetic issue. It's not a um, not a structural issue. Uh, but in the finished board, you can see you know where some foamy epoxy was used. So uh, once we have that all wet out, and uh, we're just going to lap up the laps. So I come around with the squeegee and push the glass and carbon that's hanging down up around the bottom and onto the tape. You want to go around on your rails and just double check your rails that you have no drips. Sometimes with epoxy what I'll do is I'll wait 10 minutes and come back and check it and wait another 10. The nice thing on epoxy is it cures in kind of a lineal fashion. It'll get gooey and then like honey and then hard. And so you, know, you can check it in increments and, and come back and take care of it. Once the epoxy is cured, and usually I like to catch it um, when it's about cheddar cheese state, so it's not necessarily fully cured yet. It's kind of hard, uh, but still soft. So hard enough you can handle it, soft enough that you can still flex it. I'll come back at that point, and then we're going to trim that lap line. In this case, what I'll do is I'll cut the tape in a few areas to create some relief and then I'll peel the tape back up uh, to the tape line and bend that over to a 90 degree. Sometimes I'll actually bend it 180 and then take it back to 90 and then I come back with my uh, razor blade and slice with the razor blade laid flat along the board surface to get a nice smooth transition. So you can see there I flex that up to a 90 and again sometimes I'll pull it past even to a 180. Get that razor blade in there nice and flat and slice down that uh, rail or down the tape line. That will give you a really nice clean edge to work from and the flatter you get that razor blade the better the transition is. Especially on the foam right there because it's really hard to come back and sand that. We will do a little bit of sanding but if you can get that as flat as possible it works out the best. So here I am with uh, sanding block 40 grit sandpaper on there and I'm cleaning up where I had my darts cut in the fabric and they create lumps in those areas. So I'm going to clean up all those lumps. I'm going to get it as smooth as possible. If there's any drips we missed, I'm going to sand off the drips and get that cleaned up as best you can. Once that's done, we're ready to glass the deck. So we're going to flip it over. So we're looking at the bottom right now. We're going to put a tape line because again, we're going to do a cut lap on this side as well. Uh, doing a cut lap on this side really can make your sanding job later much easier and it's not that hard to do it's much easier to do than dealing with a lumpy sand job uh, so I did not get video of 
glass in the top, but it's almost exactly the same as glass in the bottom. My GoPro malfunctioned. Thank you very much, GoPro. Uh, so once that laminate again is cheddar cheese state, uh, mostly hard, hard enough to handle, soft enough, we can still flex it a little bit. We're going to come back in here and I'm going to trim that deck lap. So again, I cut down, make some relief cuts so I can flex back the uh, tape, get that tape flexed back and come in and cut along there. And here's a close up of doing that. Now, one thing I should have done better on this board, uh, and I've done better on, on subsequent boards and other boards, is after I've trimmed that to really sand that little lap line, uh, the trim line that's left, till it's almost flush or flush with the board. Um, do that, and you can do a hot coat without doing a cheater coat, and it will come out perfect it is absolutely amazing so so again flex that over come through with the razor blade cut it off as flat as you can um, and just finishing that up right there so this board I did do a cheater coat so I taped off and then I did a real super thin coat of epoxy um, along that line after I sanded it so here I am again you want to sand that and like I said, in hindsight, I could have sanded that down much better and gotten it so there was a perfect transition and no need to do a cheater coat. Uh, what I am doing right here, and I forgot to mention this before, uh, what I am doing right here is I'm washing the board with water and a Scotch-Brite pad. Epoxy resin, as it cures, uh, will get blush uh, or create blush. And what that is is the reaction between the amines that are unreacted in the system and carbon dioxide or water that's in the air. I didn't do that when I between the other one, uh, just on this one because I know that bottom laminate has sat for a little bit and has had more of a chance to blush. I also know uh, that I'm working in a spot where I tend to have more blush issues than other areas and, and it doesn't take that much time to do it super easy water and a scotch bright pad and, and it's taken care of so uh, i've taped the board off and i've hot coated it again the gopro malfunction so i don't have any footage of actual hot coating uh, but we applied the hot coat or what's commonly referred to as a fill coat after doing that the both sides uh, the real work begins and here i am sanding the board uh, small board so actually pretty easy sand job when I designed this, I actually designed a little concave around the rails thinking that would be cool to grab onto and maybe have the, the deck pad recessed into. It's a real pain to sand that. I don't know I'd do that again. I would probably either just go with a flat deck or even a little dome on the deck. It After having ridden the board, that feature really doesn't do much for you. Um, of course, it seems like no board is complete without some graphics. Uh, so here I am applying a graphic to it, uh, a little logo for Mad Matt Designs. And we're just going to epoxy that directly on there and then put a uh, really light fiberglass fabric over that to hold it down. And to protect it when we sand it, just in case we sand a little too aggressively, we'll hit the fiberglass first and that will give us a visual indicator that we've gone too far instead of just sanding directly into the graphic. All right, so this board is going to be glossed and polished. So here I have applied the gloss coat. Simply that's a second layer of resin that goes on there and then gets wet sanded out to six to 800 grit and then buffed to gloss. For a deck pad, what I've done is I've taken a Harbor Freight garage pad that has a diamond tread to it and made my own pad on the CNC machine. We'll use some contact cement to glue that in place. Uh, we have some other videos on using the contact cement to fix deck pads. So here is the finished board and it looks sharp. So really good looking uh, with that deck pad and just the whole shape of it. I'm super excited to take it out and write it. You'll notice the resin looks kind of purple. Well, it turns out we used the resin research ultra on this uh, it's not a resin that we typically sell and it was some that we had left over from from a customer project and the ultra in the sunlight over carbon
comes out with a purple tint to it. So a little bit bummed on that, but the board looks great. Super excited to ride it.